Hey everyone, welcome back to Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Case 2, The Case of the Tin Soldier. And, um, well, if you watched case number one, we don't really need Holmes' introduction or about the regulars, because they're the exact same people. Uh, so maybe we don't have to do that again. Um, but these are, well, the people who, um, who we can get help with our sleuthing tools. I think you'll tools. find these tools to be positively invaluable as you endeavor to help Holmes solve these cases. We read, um, yeah, it explains the game. But we have to uh, gather info. We read, we get the case, somehow we read newspapers to get info, then we look in our directory after uh, places or people to visit or gather info from, correct people. Um, we have our clue history, there are some point, there's a point system, we get, yeah, and then we go to the judge when we think we have it all. And um, here are some special people like Lestrade and, and other people and places who we can always go to. Um, for example, M Mr. Meek here, he uh, does, he takes care of the of dead bodies, we can go ask him about that. Murray here, he uh, looks at, he, he's a chemist, he looks at things on the crime scene. Uh, yeah, well, different people here help us, and Holmes' introduction is basically, yeah, you get to see him. And he says the exact same thing as in the first game. So I thought we could, you know, we don't have to look at that because it's the exact same thing. So we're just going to jump into Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Case 2, the case of the Tin Soldier here. And I just, yeah, the settings uh, change to maximum sounds every time if you don't start a new game. Start a game. Uh, once we're gonna start a new game here, so get the Yes, I want to erase the other one. Inspector Smythe is greeted at the door of 221B Baker Street by Holmes' housekeeper, Mrs. Hudson. The consulting detective and the good doctor bid him enter. After foregoing a cup of tea, the inspector sits heavily in a sitting chair and looks to the men with anticipation. May we be of some assistance, Inspector Smythe? General Farmsworth Armstead, one of the six surviving Waterloo Tontine ticket holders, has been murdered. Waterloo Tontine? The Waterloo Tontine was a lottery of sorts, Watson. It was set up in 1815 to aid the veterans of the Battle of Waterloo. Wellington's victory over Napoleon. Yes, of course, I knew that. Quite an ingenious plan on the part of the founders. One pound bought a ticket in the name of some young relative. The ticket proceeds amounted to over a million pounds. Half went immediately to veterans and their families for medical and hardship expenses. What became of the other half? It all went into an account at the Bank of England where it's been collecting interest all these years. Very clever. And how does one win this prize? Simply by outliving all the other ticket holders. Mm, and now you say one of them has been murdered. Very suspicious. Who are the remaining five? The oldest is Captain Robert Jurgens, age 82. Then there are Nita and Claire Thomas, who are 80-year-old twins. William Rowland is 79, and Peter Dudley is 77. Poor General Armstead was the youngest at 74. Seems as if he would have had the best chance to outlive the others. I recall reading something in the Times about a big to-do involving the Tontine survivors on the 18th. That's correct. The Waterloo Anniversary Banquet at the Langham Hotel. Why is the name... Armstead familiar. He was a noted art collector, I believe. He also authored a well-known book, Treasures of the Conquerors. Quite right. At the time of his death, General Armstead was working on a revised edition for his publisher, Nurgett and Company. It was to contain an entirely new chapter on a fabulous diamond called the Polar Star, which at one point belonged to Joseph Bonaparte, Napoleon's brother. The general had new information which traced the gem to its present owner. Tell me about the circumstances of General Armstead's death. Oh, yes, of course. Well, let me see. At 10 o'clock this morning, the general's valet, David Sennett, admitted a call to the general's study. Sennett says he did not know the man. He was elderly and spoke with a French accent. Sennett told him the general never saw anyone in the morning while he was at work. The gentleman insisted that if Armstead read the letter he had with him, he would make an exception. 
And so it was. Senate took the letter in, Armstead read it, and went quite pale. He told Senate to let the gentleman in. Sensing something amiss, Senate dawdled in the area of the study for the next 15 minutes or so. Then he heard the distinct sound of sword play. He tried to enter the study, but found the door locked. Then he heard the crash of breaking glass. He raced to the kitchen and out the back door to enter the study from the garden. By the time he got there, the caller had vanished and the general was leaning heavily against a shattered display case of military miniatures. Before Senate could assist him, he dropped a saber from his hand and fell over dead. And I take it the letter which so upset the general was nowhere to be found. Correct, Mr. Holmes. Well, we shall put our brains and our feet to the task. Yeah, that sounds quite interesting. Yeah. All right. All right, let's look at the newspapers here. Oh, we have different newspapers from the first. Okay, so now we are in 1890. Well, let's see if we have anything here. A jewelry box would be appreciated but not expected. Sup uh, at holidays? Fitchit. Family rights of Sir Jacob Fitchit. Serving in the United States Steamship Dakota. Sorry, I've come to believe that the murderers, the plague of Fair City, might very well be tied to the fact that we are no longer God-fearing. Please consider my thoughts on this matter, your obedient servant, Henry Spurgeon. Lady or gentleman, assist young lady in very reduced circumstances with a loan of 100 pounds to enable her to learn a profession which could place her in an immediate position to gain a competence. Literary occupation, a lady or gentleman with a 200, 200 pounds of command may secure a light and lucrative appointment with an interest without liability. New books and new additions. Uh, Kirsty Murray and Henry Murray, Norgate and Company announced to be published this summer. A new edition and large and revised Treasures of the Conquerors by General Farnsworth Armstead. Several entirely new chapters, including one featuring the fam fabulous diamond, the Polar Star. Yeah, yeah, so we have. Uh, I'm write that down at this point. So we have Norgate. And company, and obviously, I mean, obviously Armstead, because I mean he's a dead dude, so we should definitely, you know, we'll look at his place. Uh, nursery rhymes of England collected by the late James Orchard Halliwell Phillips. Rather large den of poisonous and common snakes were found within a stone wall outside of Whitehall. They were immediately destroyed by the yard. A woman's white shoe was found among them. Gloucester Cathedral. Used yesterday, the old organ was built by Charles and Harris in 1666. Many old pipes. Tax strike. Group of Liverpool importers have ensued a strike against what they consider unfair custom duties. New sheep. A man self-dubbed the pioneer of husbandry reports his work to have yielded a new species of sheep which produced superior mutton on a diet of clover. Has made fabricated claims prior, most recently the discovery of the device to cure ailments such as baldness. Police. Evenson and Co. gift shop report break in on Wednesday night. The lock on the back door has been forced open. Nothing appears to have been taken. The safe in the office has not been tampered with. Ah, an Ashworth elephant in Castle discovered the body of a man apparently murdered during the last night's performance. Again. The body was found after the entertainment in the box, which, according to Usher, the man had been occupied alone. Uh, apparently been stabbed to death. Yeah, okay, that was in... 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 In the last case, too, in the newspaper. Anarchist found dead in room. A man named Nikolai Gorsky was found shot to death in his room near Aldgate Station. Russian exile. Involved in exile political activities. Police attribute his murder to those warring Russian factions. Asked the Home Secretary to bring pressure to bear upon foreign governments to, to end their use of British soil as a battleground for foreign internal strife. Apartments, ho holidays, private hotel. Running about renovations. John Bull, a real jubilee game, the best ever issued, provided mirth for young and old, 64 cleverly and well executed, laughable cards, blah blah, whatever. Entertainments, Roy Slade's wild African extravaganza opening tonight. Okay, and you f did the Bloomsburg propaganda, spiritualism, Irish exhibition. Ooh. Panic at the theater, Francias. Francias, oh, in Paris. Formers at the theater, Francais. Oh, Francais, oh, they misspelled it. At the top, in the title. 
This evening was stirred by an occurrence which resulted in panic. Shortly after 10 o'clock, the electric wire supplying the chandeliers came in contact in consequence of the wearing away of the envelope. The light was consequently extinguished and several sparks fell among the audience. A panic ensued in spite of the efforts of the actors to reassure the public. Primal duty at the theater immediately communicated with the headquarters of the brigade. Team fire engine was dispatched to the spot. Great excitement in the neighborhood. Okay. So basically just that his book is coming out. In June 890. Deaths. William Fard and Melbourne. Nathan Revel. Funerals. Kobe's for funerals. 20 pound reward missing. A set of ruby earrings set within a fine white gold with silver clasps. Reward will be collected when returned forthwith. Honor of our era, blah blah blah, fellow of the Royal Geographical Society, associate with the institution of the civil engineers, invites discussion of the reports of the Challenger expedition and of the new principles of natural philosophy, former having been misrepresented in the publication to the detriment of true knowledge and honor. Art and entertainment, Princess Theatre, French Place, Russian Exhibition, Chamber of Horrors, Man Was Not Born by Constance Nilhus, a raging tale of romance for the pen of a woman. Oh no! Tackle subjects previously thought impossible in fiction, a tale that rings true, told with boldness. This is the book that everyone is sure to be talking about in the coming season and for many years to come. The editor. Regards the suggestion of black hounds might assist in tracking the Thames murderer as a breeder of dogs and knowing their power, I little doubt that had a hound been put upon the scent of the murder while fresh. At least in those cases where the body was not actually floating in the water, it might have done with the po what the police have failed in. I uh, made some experiments in this area myself, but Scotland Yard does not appear interested in my results, but now when all trace of the scent has been trodden out, it would be quite useless. Meanwhile, as no means of detection should be left untried, it would be well if, if a couple or so of trained bloodhounds, unless trained they're worthless, were kept for a time at one of the police headquarters, ready for immediate use in case their services should be called for. Uh, Elton Sherman, Daniel Willie Wills was a footman to the late blah blah. He's supposed to call at once to the office of blah blah. New Scotland Yard. Ironical questions have been asked in the House of Commons with regard to the architectural aspect of the building, which is designed destined to go by the name of New Scotland Yard. Obviously intended to be the prelude of sharp criticism, and in order that the criticism may be appreciated, that is justice or injustice as the case may be, may not be followed will be no bad thing to inquire into the nature of the structure which is to become a substitute for the miscellaneous collection of buildings in which, for some time, the central business of the Metropolitan Police has been conducted. Nor will any criticism be fair which does not take into account the capacities of the site and the complex character of the business which has to be conducted in Scotland Yard. For practical purposes, New Scotland Yard is an unqualified success and has it has potentialities such as a spacious and fairly light crypt which men may be kept in reserve in the event of an unexpected riot, of which space does not permit the enumeration. Lol, lol, lol. Lost Gentlemen's Gold Watch. Shooting shirts. Clee and Sons are now prepared to supply their specialized sporting shirt. Strongly recommended by medicine doctor in the field. The material is soft as silk, warm as flannel, and will not shrink. Valuable to all sportsmen. Uh... Imported firearms. Police murder in Bloomsbury. A murder was committed in Bloomsbury last night. Shortly after 10 p.m., Constable Lane, summoned by cries for help, entered the house of 42 Tottenham Court Road of Mr. Oswald Mason. Mason, chief accountant of the Bank of England, found the body of Mr. Mason sprawled across the desk in his study, where he had apparently been murdered by a blow to the head. Oh. Mr. Mason's body was discovered by his wife upon her return to their home around 10 p.m. The police report. Only that the intruder apparently entered by an upstairs window and judging by disarray, Mr. Mason met a struggle occurred. Uh, best titans of Scotland Yard are now involved in the investigation and search for the perpetrator in this bloody crime. Sasters at sea. The Reuters telegram from Dunkirk says the British steamer Talisma bound from Leith took the ground on Saturday night in the outer harbour after colliding with a jetty. Being lightened and would possibly be able to dock shortly. Captain Lambert and eight of the crew of the steamer Emma were landed at Southampton yesterday from St. Malo. The Emma left Sunderland for Bordeaux on Monday last with coal and on Sunday night struck a rock off Ushant, sinking four minutes after. Whoa. All on board were saved in an open boat, except for one Russian sailor purportedly involved in a jewelry heist scandal and landed at Brest the next morning. Attack. On Wednesday evening, a Mr. and Mrs. J.T. Westmoreland were accosted in the Hyde Park area after sunset. Mr. Westmoreland def 
positively identified a Simon Ivory from a police sketch of the culprit to reward poster for information on Ivory's whereabouts. Okay, so I can't really see that there was anything interesting in this. But maybe there will be. Like, maybe, you know, we'll find information later, so we have to come back and be like, yeah, this is, you know. I like how all of these are really, like, close in time. Like, the, in the first case, they were really spaced out. Some births. Marriages. Sanders. Widow of Colonel Kello Chesney. Miscellaneous. Lord Astley Denham will lecture on Tuesday on the beneficial consequence of sports and hunting and the development of character in young men of the Empire. Here, 75th Waterloo Ball and Anniversary. The Times is pleased to announce a dinner on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Waterloo. Wednesday, June 18th at the Langham Hotel. Maybe we should go to the Langham Hotel then. Langham Hotel? We can also always go to them and talk about the whole thing. Uh, or coming up. I think it hasn't happened yet. Um, surviving participants in the Waterloo Tontine will be guests of honor. Further information is available at the Langham Hotel or at the Times office. Yes, Times office. We do have a regular dude there. So we can definitely go there. Personal and whatever C means. Constantine, it is the bright day that brings forth the adder. Carl Jommel, acclaimed actor and manager, is requested to call at once at the office of Mr. R. Aylward, solicitor. <laughs> Again, someone to that person. Mr. Waterloo, Wednesday, 11.53 train. Lady who left in taxi and waved care to no gent grey coat. Sincere. Entertainments. Gallery of Mystery. Robert Ganthony's laughable musical and illusory entertainment twice daily. Sir, having agonized on what it takes to have you print one of my many critical missives, I have changed my tack to say how much I love everything, even the times. Yeah, we've seen that before. The Moor and Burgess Minstrel's splendid and attractive entertainment, St. James Hall tonight. Royal Academy of Music. Patrons, Her Majesty the Queen and the Royal Family. Ooh. Royal Russian Circus, Igor Khrushchev, with the finest equestrian entertainment. Human Society Brompton, funds are urgently required for support of the anti-vivisectionist faction. Annual expenses, 24,000 pence or pounds, I'm not sure. <laughs> of the fixed income, under 3,000. Okay. Foreign and Colonial News, we received the following telegrams through the Reuters agency. Labour agitation in Spain, Valencia. Civil Guard have today been again called upon to disperse the groups groups of strikers assembled in the streets. Many arrests have been made. Disturbance at the Russian Social Club. A scuffle broke out last night at the lecture on women's rights and birth control. Yeah, go. At the Russian Immigrants Social Club, 7 High Street, SE. Sweden? No, no. The featured speaker was Sophie Botkin, wife of Vladimir Botkin, the exiled Russian anarchist. According to the president of the club, Jacob Epstein, the disturbance occurred during the reception which followed the lecture and which was attended by close to 100 women. One of the women apparently became outraged and had to be escorted from the building. Tames investigation. Oh, here's the one that the dude uh, with the bloodhounds talked about. The investigation continues into the series of murders that have been plaguing the bank side Southwark area during the past several nights. Sunday's murder, the third in the recent outburst of violence, came as a shock to the community. Mr. Ch Charles Attard, a well-known London barrister, was found behind a waterfront warehouse in Upper Ground Street, brutally murdered. Shot twice with a large caliber gun. The absence of Attard's wallet points to a possible motive of robbery, but the police have given little additional information to the press. More entertainment, National Gallery, a rare precious exhibit of gems and treasured artifacts. And the private collection of foreign visiting dignitaries, limited engagement. Huh. Gems and treasured artifacts? I don't know, it's a long shot, but I'm thinking maybe, you know, because he, he, I mean, Armstead wrote about that, right? So, possibly? Long shot, but put a question mark on that princess theater french play soul manager second 22nd season of french plays now underway drury lane the national theater carl rosa opera season editor of the times or oh, i was i thought it was fred weasley i was like what sir i beg to suggest the organization of a small force of plainclothes constables mounted on bicycles yep that was in the last one too 
Uh, paying my daily visit to my church, St. Mary's, this afternoon, I was surprised to find the caretaker in a, in a semi-stupefied state. Asking her what was the matter, she told me that a man missing an arm and a leg had just entered the church and finding her all alone inquired whether I was in the vestry. On receiving a reply in the negative, he said, I see you are alone, and immediately took out a pocket hand, pocket handkerchief and dashed it in her face. A strong smell of whatever liquid it had been steeped in dazed and stupefied her, and she for a moment or two lost her consciousness. Noises on the workmen on the roof seemed to have alarmed this scoundrel, and he bolted out of the church. This incident, sir, perhaps might afford a clue. At any rate, it will warn solitary women who are in charge of churches. Das Hagen. Okay. Interesting. Now we have June 10th, 1890. Alright, we have Errol. Welcome, welcome home, Violet. Roland. Regretted not keeping appointments. Just rendezvous at the society club soonest. Lady League of Finches hosts all dowagers for immediate enrollment in our grand plan, Anita and Claire. The pound reward, ten pound reward, lost on the first of May. Diamond brooch consisting of a large diamond in blue animal setting, enamel setting. Whoever will take some to two, Baron's Court Terrace, West Kensington, shall receive the reward. Wellington's birthplace. Sir, I have today deposited at the military exhibition at Chelsea a most valuable piece of evidence as to the birthplace of the great Duke of Wellington, his census paper of 1851, first line written by his own hand. In it, he states he was born in Ireland. He believes at Athy. This document was given to me and my sister as a great treasure by our friend Major G. Graham, the late Registrar General. I trust it will be will end all controversy on this matter. Faithfully yours, C.G. Palmer. Intelligence from our correspondence. Accident to a mail steamer. Allen Line steamer Prussian, which grounded at Port Glasgow after collision with the steamer Memling on Thursday last. Fatal accident. A sad accident occurred on Monday last. Mr. Francis Scott, Somerset, were writing. Yep. Charge of murder. An inquest was held yesterday in the body of William Aspinwall. Yeah, that we've seen that before. A strange event. A sudden gale of the Isle of Man blew off the roof of a stone church. Yep. Capture of a slaver. Her Majesty's ship Fearless has captured and towed with 131 slaves, boys and females, on board south of Agig. The vessel has been condemned and the slaves will be handed over to the government authorities. Mr. Robert W. W. Marshall. We are glad to be able to state that Mr. Robert Marshall's latest novel, Marvel's Adventures, has been approved for publication. Neve's Foot, for Growing Children and the Aged. Okay, here's a long letter to the editor. Ask a question to your correspondents who want to disperse the vicious inhabitants of Flower and Dorset streets. There are no lower streets in London, and if they are driven out of these, where are they to go? The horror and excitement caused by the murder of the Whitechapel outcasts imply a universal belief that they had a right to life. If they had, then they had the further right to higher shelter from the bitterness of the English night. If they had no such right, then it was on the whole a good thing that they fell into in with unknown surgical genius. Oh, so again, I think they're definitely referring to Jack the Ripper. He has made his contribution towards solving the problem of clearing the east end of its vicious inhabitants. The typical Annie Chapman will always find someone in London town to let her have a DOS for consideration. If she is systematically dispersed, wrestles will follow. Carry her taint to street, blah blah blah. Wow. No, I don't know like that. I don't know what the this person is going for. 75th Waterloo Ball and Anniversary. The Times says please announce a dinner on the occasion. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yes, we've read that before. Stage as a profession. Ladies and gentlemen adopting the stage should apply for the a prospect of the, the Dramatic and Burlesque Training College. Fees low. Staff of professors. Constant practice and appearance. Times column of new books and new editions. Clarendon Press new books. Just published second volume. Enlarged and revised. Shakespeare as a dramatic artist, popular illustration of the principles. Lannister Moors, a strange, the strange incident in the ancestral grounds of Duke Lannister came to a glad conclusion yesterday as the culprit for the ghostly hoax was thwarted by a ragtag group of kids. Spake Lord Dentmore, the head perpetrator. I would have got away with it if it weren't for those kids and their dog. Got a big uh, what, um, Scooby Doo reference there. <laughs> All right. Well, that was that was all the newspapers. So I'd say it wasn't too much. I mean, definitely go to the Langham. I mean, Norgate and Company. Ask about Armstead. Go and talk talk with Armstead's. You know, go to Armstead's place. Obviously. Um. 
Yeah, Lang and Motel and Times Office and possibly National Gallery, but I'm not sure about that. That feels could be off track. But yeah, okay. And I'm gonna talk to all the regulars. We talk to all the regulars at first. Yeah, that's a good idea to get lot all the info. All right. But uh, yeah, the first episode here, just reading the newspapers. But uh, next time we're gonna start getting into the directory, you know, getting info and stuff. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see ya.